As of August 2023, this image from orbit depicts 89 ships awaiting passage via the Panama Canal. What in the world is going on here? Why are these ships piling up and why are they spending millions to get ahead in line? It has gotten so bad that some of them are spending up to $4 million to move ahead in line. Not only are there too many ships attempting to get through, but several variables have combined to create the busiest waterway in the world, which was brought to a complete halt. To appreciate the significance of the Panama Canal's history, you must first understand how it came to be. In the 1500s, Vasco Núñez de Balboa's discovery sparked interest in the idea of cutting through the Panama Islands to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. King Charles I of Spain considered the idea, but the rough terrain seemed to be a barrier. It wasn't until France, under the leadership of Count Ferdinand de Lesseps, of the Suez Canal fame, was willing to take up the difficulty that their 1880 effort at a sea-level canal confronted constant rain, landslides, and the terrible spread of illnesses like malaria and yellow fever. However, building this marvel came at a tremendous cost in terms of both human lives and financial resources. The dream of a sea-level canal collapsed under the weight of nature's fury. And then the United States arrived, driven by President Theodore Roosevelt's determination. Over 25,000 people lost their lives during the construction of the Panamanian Islands, a dangerous combination of snake-infested jungles and hazardous weather. It took more than three decades and an incredible $375 million, or $7.3 billion today, to realize this engineering marvel. But the Panama Canal was about more than just connecting waterways. It was about redefining the dynamics of global trade. In the 1970s, the canal not only opened doors, but also paved new paths for economic growth, generating jobs, supporting environmental conservation initiatives, and ultimately enabling Panama to regain sovereignty over this crucial waterway. In summary, the Panama Canal is more than just a route. It is a monument to human ingenuity and tenacity, a conduit that changed economies, societies, and the very landscape of international trade. However, despite its successful history, the canal is now facing a new threat that pulls at the very fabric of its existence, a severe water shortage. To understand how serious this issue is, you must understand how the canal operates. Ships can cross the continental divide thanks to the intricate network of locks, lakes, and well-planned maneuvers that make up the Panama Canal. As a ship approaches the canal, tugboats gently pull it into alignment. The trip through the canal begins with a set of steps. Specifically, the ship enters the Gatun Locks, which is a three-step procedure that raises the ship roughly 87 feet above sea level. The process begins with the ship being led into the Gatun Locks sea level lock chamber. Once the ship is safely inside the chamber, the lock doors are firmly sealed shut under the watchful eye of a lockmaster, guaranteeing the vessel's containment within the walls of the chamber. This incremental process occurs across each of the three successive lock chambers at the Gatun Locks, lifting the ship gradually and steadily. The vessel will line up with Gatun Lake's elevation. When this elevation process is finished, the ship reaches the highest point of the Gatun Locks, which is parallel to the level of Gatun Lake. At this time, the vessel gently leaves the Gatun Locks and glides across Gatun Lake. The ship then travels through the Culebra Cut, a 7.8-kilometer artificial valley built through the Continental Divide, and stops at the Pedro Miguel Lock, where it drops roughly 31 feet after a 15-meter stretch made possible by the construction of Gatun Dam. This complex dance of water levels and locks is a painstakingly calculated journey that leads to Miraflores Lake and the ship's final drop through the Miraflores locks, lowering it an additional 54 feet. Following the straightforward but effective principle of gravity, the ship then makes its grand exit. What about the cost of this voyage due to water scarcity? It's not a set price. Rather, it depends on several variables, such as ship size and fuel prices. For example, cruise ships usually pay between $50,000 and $250,000 to cross the Panama Canal. The exact amount may change as toll structures change, but the basics of how the canal operates remain the same. What part does water play in all of this? And more significantly, how can the canal, which is situated between two oceans, have water shortages? 
A single ship using the canal requires an astounding 53 million gallons of fresh water, which is supplied by two man-made lakes called Alahuela and Gatun that receive rainfall. The region has had a severe drought that has upset the canal's regular rhythm. Panama saw record low rainfall levels in the spring and summer of 2023, which severely damaged the canal's water supplies. The levels of Gatun Lake, which is crucial for providing the canal with fresh water, have drastically dropped, which is concerning. With water levels reaching the bottom, the Panama Canal Authority is facing severe repercussions, forcing the ACP to take immediate action. Cross-filling lockages at the Panamax locks are one of the creative techniques the Panama Canal Authority ACP has implemented to address the water scarcity affecting the canal. During transit, this method maximizes the flow of water between chambers. As part of their conservation efforts, they also suspend power generation at the Gatun hydropower plant and provide hydraulic assistance at the Panamax locks, in addition to minimizing needless discharge into the sea. Due to the failure of these strategies, vessel transits have been cut, resulting in lengthy wait times for ships. What formerly took hours now takes weeks. This interruption has highlighted how the climate catastrophe directly affects global trade. The ACP has used lock optimization and draft management techniques. Draft management entails modifying the maximum permitted draft for ships passing through the locks by the levels of Gatun Lake. The ACP modifies the maximum authorized draft permitted for vessels transiting the Neo Panamax locks based on the current and anticipated level of Gatun Lake. For example, starting on March 1, 2023, since less water is needed to elevate ships with lesser drafts, the maximum permitted draft was set at 15.09%, meaning that to be permitted to transit, they must trim or dump cargo. This action stops ships from using too much water by compelling them to trim or dump cargo if their drafts go above predetermined limitations. Additionally, the Panamax locks have a lock optimization feature called cross-filling lockages, which saves water equivalent to six lockages every day. However, putting these solutions into practice requires careful planning and assessment. Any changes to the canal systems must be carried out carefully to avoid interfering with their essential services. Despite the present difficulties brought on by the drought, it is imperative to understand that this turbulent time is only transitory. The Panama Canal is a sophisticated engineering accomplishment, and any change should try to improve its sustainability without jeopardizing its essential role in world trade. For the time being, Panama, a nation that thrives on hardship, is already planning strategies to address and resolve this persistent problem. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts or which upcoming game you're most excited about.